Okay, we're looking here at question four of the 2017 paper, um, paper one, and this is read it here, so you've got part A, solve for x. Now, if I look along here, it's an equation of x, 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 so it's an equation of one unknown. So this can be solved, so it's just a matter of applying your algebraic knowledge. There's ten marks going for it, now, this is easy money. You know, if you're doing past leaving cert, and this is not easy peasy, you know, you're at the wrong level. Mm -hmm. just, just not to be too harsh about it. So if I try to start this, okay, I want to solve this, okay, it's an equation. If you're solving something, you want x on one side, and then everything else to move to the far side. Now, it's how you do that is where the the algebra comes in. But in algebra, there's only a few, a few rules you have to remember. You just, I suppose, you know, ultimately have to remember them. Okay, otherwise you're going nowhere. And that's so if I run through it here, now what I've done is, the first step here, if I remove the brackets, okay, so the 11x term doesn't change. So I'm removing the brackets here by multiplication. Minus 5 times 2x is minus 10x. Minus 5 times minus 1, so minus, minus the plus. 5 times 1 is 5. So I've removed the brackets on the left side. Let's do the same thing on the right side. So 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative uh, x is, is negative 3x. And the last thing then, the 3 here doesn't change because there's, there's no operation affecting it. So come along now, we're going to do the addition and subtraction. Just one second while I stop my dog from barking. Hopefully that worked and my uh, two minutes of staring at the dog will stop it from barking. So apologies for that. Now, so from the step here, I'm going, to, I'm going to add what I can, add like terms, okay, and actually, yeah, add like terms. So I'm adding the 11x take away 10x, so 11 apples take away 10 apples is 1 apple. That's literally all I've done on the left side. On the right side, I've added the numbers 18 and 3 to get 21. So I haven't done very much here, just keep it simple. I'm now going to bring all the x's to one side, all the numbers to one side. So I'm bringing the 5 here across the equal, okay. It was added on the left, becomes the opposite operator on the right, so it becomes subtracted, okay. And then bring the minus 3x, so subtracted on the right-hand side. When it comes across to the left, it becomes added, and that's it here. That's all that's happened. I've moved those two things, okay, and again, consistently using the rules of algebra. And the rule there simply is if you move something across the equal, it changes operator, okay. And we've discussed that before in different questions. I now end up doing an addition step. I'm just going to combine these two terms. So one apple plus three apples is four apples. Okay. And then 21 take away five is 16. At this stage, look, you're kind of, it's kind of getting recognized that this is going to solve out. So four times X equals 16. So I bring the four across. It was multiplying on the left. It becomes divided on the right. I end up with this term X is equal to 16 over four, which is it's just a sum. Four to 16 goes to four times. Now, if I wanted to, okay, I don't really didn't do it here, but if you want to make sure, you could put the x equal to 4 back into the original equation. And you should end up with the left-hand side equaling the right-hand side, proving that the value of 4 was correct. Now, always remember in something like this, okay, you could have guessed values of x. And if, in this case, it was a whole number, you know, you would have ended up getting the right answer. But you never know if your answer is going to be a decimal or something. So if it was a whole number, you were definitely sure that it was happening. Well, then you just randomly go, put zero through it. Okay, C does left-hand side equal right-hand side. Put one, negative one through it. Does left-hand side equal right-hand side. And keep going, okay, until you hit four. But that's an awful lot of work. Now with calculators and the ability to just place, um, you know, the the, 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 the the number in the calculation, that makes things faster. But even then, it's very easy. It's very error-prone. By far the best way is to use algebra to reduce it down and to solve it. So that's part A worth 10 marks. Now the next part B here, so you're asked to solve these two simultaneous equations. There's different methods for simultaneous equations. You're kind of forced in here uh, to use the substitution method, okay, because it's this here, if you, th if you look at it, and it says y plus 5 equals 2x, okay, if I express that a different way uh, that and brought the 5 across, it'd be y equals 2x and the 5 becomes negative going across the equal, changes operator. And that's a linear equation, it's power 1, okay. Now, quadratic has an x squared with a power 2, but um, that's, the, that's the highest power. This y squared indicates to me that this is an equation of a circle, okay. And as a circle, circle, sorry, as a circle with center is 0, 0, okay. So, ultimately, what's probably happening here is, and if I graph this really well, okay, 
I know that the radius of this circle here is equal, the radius squared is 25, so the radius is 5, so I'm going across 5 units, and then draw your circle, it's going to be something like that, okay, I'll just draw the heavy circle if I need to go further, actually I will need to go further, but I flipped it around to go down through here and back around, okay, apologies for the disastrous um, drawing, but now from the way I look at this linear equation here, I know that has a slope of plus 2, crosses the y-axis at um, minus 5. Okay, so it, when it's rearranged in this form, it's taken up the form of y equals m times x plus c. m being the slope, so the slope is 2, and c being the, the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. And across the y-axis here at minus 5, it's got a slope of 2, so it's going up 2 for every 1 it's going across, so it'll have a slope of something like... Oh, that line there, that point there. So I'm basically doing rise over run of 2 over 1. That'll go something. Now, apologies until we get this line, finish it off. Something like that. Okay. I apologize again. <laughs> but what has, this is indicated to me, okay, this line is hitting the circle at two points. So, first of all, it's not a tangent. Okay. It's a chord. Now, from that knowledge, okay, even just a quick drawing of it helps me to figure out what's going on, but I'm going to end up with two answers. The two answers I'm going to end up with are going to, end, are going to be the points of intersection of the line and the circle. Okay, as I said, now this would be the, the uh, substitution method, okay, and let's get stuck into it, do it. Okay, so I wish I'd remembered I'd done this. Okay, I did a screen grab of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. See there, the radius is 5. The center is 0, 0. This is the line uh, y equals 2x minus 5. Cross is a minus 5. If you look at it, it's going up 2 units. Okay, for every 1, it's going across. So it's going up, up 2. And that creates the slope. Okay, there. Okay, so we've got 2 units up, 1 unit across. So rise over run. 2 divided by 1 is 2. That's what's going on. Okay, so the... Uh, actual answer here, now have I done it both ways? I don't think so, okay. So, I'm taking my simpler equation, the linear equation, and I'm rearranging it here for y equals 2x minus 5. Because now, what I can do in the second equation, the circular equation, x squared plus y squared is 25, I can now replace the y with the x term 2x minus 5. So that's basically what I'm doing in the next line, that y has now been replaced by this. Now, you now have to take over and just uh, do the simplification step of expanding this uh, bracket. So this bracket 2x minus 5 squared means 2x minus 5 by 2x minus 5. And I've probably done that, actually done it up here in the question. Okay. Uh, if you notice that it's an equation of all the same unknown, so therefore it can be solved. It's just a matter of doing the work. So I expand this out, the 2x minus 5 is by itself. Uh, the way I'm following the method here of writing the second bracket out twice. I'm just the first term into the first bracket and the second term into the second bracket. So I can go along and go left to right and remove brackets. Okay, so x squared doesn't change. It's not being uh, affected by an operator. 2x by 2x is 4x squared. 2x by minus 5 is minus 10x. Minus 5 by 2x is minus 10x. Minus 5 by minus 5 is plus 25. And that equals their uh, right-hand side, which hasn't been affected. There was no operator affecting it. Now move along, okay, and I'm going to add like terms. So 1 apple plus 4 apples is 5 apples. 10x, so minus 10x, minus 10x is the same thing as minus 20x. The, I bring the 25, now I brought the 25 across the, the right-hand side. It's become negative 25, and just to speed things up, I've, I've subtracted them. Now, what you can do here, this is more of an honours thing, but a good honours student would always recognise when something is common to both sides, it cancels. And it'd be something they wouldn't necessarily have to think about. They just they learn to work at that standard, okay? So instead of having to do any algebra at all in this sense, I go, well, 25 is there, I'm there, it's just gone. Without any, any moving any around, it's just, you can ignore it, okay? So you end up with here, this, um, now this is a quadratic, okay? If you see a quadratic solve it, now you could use the minus b, the quadratic formula, like I mentioned in question three, um, but... The simplest way here is to use the fast method. I'm looking for what can be what can be divided into both terms. Okay, I'm going to create two factors. Now in this case, I could divide both 
of these terms by 5x. 5x squared divided by 5x um, would leave you with x, which I'm writing here. Okay, uh, 20x, so minus 20x divided by 5x would leave you with minus 4. Now, to, to make that reversible, I need to multiply it by 5x. If I've divided both sides term by 5x, to reverse it, I'd have to multiply it by both terms by 5x. And in doing that method, okay, I've now discovered both factors. So it's 5x times x minus 4. So 5x equals 0 is one factor. x minus 4 equals 0 is the other. Okay, and by solving those two mini equations, I can find the value of the factors. So in this case, the, the value of the, of the first factor is x is equal to 0. The value of the second factor is the minus 4 across the equal becomes uh, um, added on the, on the right. You end up with x is equal to plus 4. So I have my two x values. Now if we go back to my equation, we should see that one x value was 0, one x value was 4. So one x value here, all along the y axis, x is 0. And then the other option, the other point of intersection here, uh, the x is equal to 4. So look, my graph is agreeing with my, my calculation. So happy days. I now need to calculate the y value. So if I use my simpler equation, okay, doesn't matter if I need to rearrange or whatever, but I'm just going, I, I'm going to use the rearrange version that I started with. Um, when x is 0, so you're going to find out the, y, the corresponding y value. So put 0 in for x. I've done it here. You end up with y equals minus 5. So that's one of the points of intersection. The second one, when x is equal to 4, I put it into my linear equation. I end up finding the y is equal to 3, and that's the other coordinate, 0, 3. What was that? 8. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 5. Work the graph and just see. So uh, I should say four there. Apologies, not zero. So we should be four three. So four on the x, three on the y. Another one is zero on the x uh, minus five on the y. Okay. So just that's an error in the fact that I just, I've just type a typo basically. Now this part B here again is worth fifteen d. So again, it's a, it's a money shot. Um, You'd be, I'd be hoping that this is a bog standard. As soon as you turn the page, you see this question being asked. You're going, yes, okay, it's something I prepared for. You need to know how to solve both types of simultaneous equations. Um, this, the most common one, the one you probably learned first, is the substitution or the ellipsoid elimination method. Okay, um, but that won't work for this situation. We have, like, you know, equations are not, are not both linear. Okay. Now, I think that's the end of B. So, okay, so thanks so much for um, getting through question four. It's a bit longer than normal. And see you on question five.